Sometimes when speaking, you need a little bit more information. Sometimes you present a statement that could be interpreted in many different ways that needs a little bit more explanation to be clearer to your hearer. For example, if you said a statement such as, my child moved out today, that could be interpreted in many different ways. What does it mean that your child moved out today? What were the circumstances of your child moving out? For that sentence to be clear in the, in the ears of those who hear you speak, you need to provide a little bit more explanation to that idea of your child moving out. If you said something like, my child moved out today, he packed his car and drove away to college. You know the idea of that child moving out was going to college and not some other event that made the child move out. So this concept of idea explanation is throughout scripture. We find it all different kinds of places. And what we want to do today is kind of give an example of what's called an idea explanation. So let's look at that and find out what an idea explanation is and how we can use it in our Bible reading. An idea explanation is this. The definition for an idea explanation is a proposition stating a whole and one or more which sets forth the parts of the whole or clarifies the meaning of the proposition. The symbol we're going to use for idea explanation is ID, and the explanation is EXP. The key words that we're going to be looking for can be that is or for. But oftentimes, there's no specific key words that we're looking for. It's more the concept. We see um, when we look at an idea explanation, a concept and then it more clearly uh, explained underneath. So there's not a lot of key words to look for. It's more the concept that we're going for. And a, and a good example of an idea explanation in Scripture is Genesis 27, verse 36. It says this, Jacob supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and now he has taken away My blessing. So if we were going to split this verse into propositions, we see Jacob supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright. There's a key word that we look for. There's a series and. So we're going to make sure to separate right there. Now, how do we separate an idea explanation if we don't know there's key words? First of all, let's look at the idea. Jacob supplanted me these two times. That's the concept. How did he do it? How, did he ex- how does Moses explain how Jacob supplanted me these two times? Well, he did it by taking away my birthright and now taking away my blessing. So the idea is Jacob supplanted me these two times. How do you explain it? What did he do? He took away my birthright and now he has taken away my blessing. So you should have three different propositions there. Jacob supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright. And and now he has taken away my blessing. So what do we do? We connect the small things first. We start small and work toward our big idea. So what are the, the things we can immediately connect? What are the things that stand out to us? The first thing that stands out to me is I see a series that can be connected between the second and third proposition. He took away my birthright, and now he has taken away my blessing. So I'm going to bracket the second and third proposition with a series. So these two things are connected. The idea, Jacob supplanted me these two times, we're going to bracket to the explanation of he takes away my birthright, and now he takes away my blessing. The idea... Is, is Jacob supplanting me? And the explanation is his behavior. How did he come about doing what he did? So the idea and the explanation are connected to the series. The first proposition is connected to the second and the third. Now, like I said, there's, 
not many key words other than that is or for that we can use a, um, an idea explanation. They're, they're kind of difficult to spot because there's not key words that just glare out at you like series and alternatives and all those kind of things. It's, it's more of a nuanced thing you get when you read. You see the idea and then how it's carried out underneath. And that's how you know an idea explanation. If you can explain what the, what the first proposition is, is in, in many ways, that's your idea. And then your explanation is how that gets specific, how the idea is specific. So pay attention to those in Scripture. They're, they're not difficult to spot when you know what you're looking for. Just pay attention to those big concepts and then how they're explained afterwards, and you'll know that you're dealing with an idea and an explanation. These are very beneficial to use, especially in tricky passages where you might see a, a difficult to understand concept and then, boom, right underneath it, I'm going to explain how this works out. We see this in Romans quite frequently, uh, that there's a big idea and then Paul will explain that right afterwards. We see this very frequently used in the New Testament, especially in the Pauline letters and epistles. So pay attention to that idea explanation and we'll see.